Okay, I'm moving on to my posterior shelf. And if I look at my brim, it's not actually square, but if I lay my square on it, you can see that uh, uh, at this particular point, I have, um, I have a, an area that's broad. Mine is a little rounded. So if I lay my square on my medial wall, what I want to do is create more of a flattening back here so he's not sitting on a, on a roll. So I'll take my draw knife and I'm just going to create a slight flattening in that area. You can use your, you can use your uh, flat rasp just as well. Take the edges off. And I'm, I'm getting into that so-called wallet area of the glutes. And I'm trying to create this pressure in this particular location. I can tell from my hand placement that this area pooched out. So I'm gonna roll it medially. Every once in a while, I'll stop and look at my my model here, so I don't get lost. I'm getting pretty close. I need to get some cupping on the lateral wall. Okay, I'm getting near the initial tuberosity. I got a little bit of distortion created from the, uh, the one inch webbing that I used. I'm just gonna smooth that up slightly. Taking off the high spots. In the past, uh, in your handout, it talks about flattening this wallet area. And I'm gonna put some compression in here before I start taking down my tension values because I have some highs and lows. I'm just gonna smooth it up. Spin it around, look for any more distortion. I'm getting really close to just approaching my uh, my global reductions. One more area on the handout. It talks about um, talks about on your cast modifications. Let's read it here. It's the posterior medial me, the posterior medial region is composed of the triangular area, which is bounded by the semitendinosus, the gracilis and the inferior pubic ramus. The deep muscles of the adductor magnus occupy the floor of this triangle. So we're gonna outline an area here where I can put some pressure. And just by the way I had my hands on my patient and my, and my partner had his hands in the front, I've got some pooching in this area. So according to the, uh, uh, according to the handout to the PowerPoint, I know that I could come into this triangular area and I could take some material off. So I'm just going to 
take my bulge away. This is the bulge that I see. I'm going to come in with my flat and I'm just going to take that area down. Not much, just a slight. I know my patient can tolerate pressure in that area. It's pretty soft in this location. And if you recall that the brims that you put on your patient have created good compression, whether it was the quad or whether it was the IC. So the area that we've been working up to this point is all the area contained in those brims. It's, it, it may seem like we're taking off a lot of material, but think about the compression that was created with the brims that you chose. So I should not be affecting my global reductions at that particular, at this point. I'm just making judgments on the distortion created by my cast and how much to take off. So I've got some counter pressure here from the posterior lateral to the medial posterior corner. And I've still created that, kept that U that I, I need in, to, to, uh, in my brim. So at this particular point, I like what I see. I'm going to reestablish my trim line back here on my shelf, posterior shelf. And I'm just going to basically hit my, my global reductions at this particular point. So my targets are marked on my worksheet. Depending on which liner you use, you'll follow their specification just like we did on transtibial. I use Ohio Willow Wood in the progressive five to seven percent reduction. So I'll look to my worksheet and I'll find out what my targets are. And I want to keep my targets right my targets easily viewable. So if, if I write my targets down, let's loosen this up a bit. I want to write my targets in an area that's easily viewable that I won't distort. So at my two inch level, I'm looking at 19 and a quarter. Four inch, 17, five eighths, six inch, 16, and three eight in the sixteen point three eight my eight inch probably not going to take anything off with the eight inch because like I said I elongated it and I need to get it fifteen point two and I think my my model was fifteen and five eight so I may just leave it as is we'll see how it looks as I move forward so at this point measure my two inch see where I'm at I'm at uh, 20 and 3 quarters. Twenty. Eighteen and three quarters. Seventeen and three eighths. Double check that. Two, four, six, eight, ten. All right. At this point, I've recorded my model and compared it to my target. At my two-inch level, I'm three quarters of an inch too big. At my four inch level, I'm three quarters of an inch too big. At my six inch level, I'm an inch too big. And distally at my eight inch level, I'm a half inch too big. So I know if I do three overlapping global reductions, I can reduce this about an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna to try to do about five overlapping uh, uh, move, movements of the rasp 
to try to get my uh, reach my um, reduction rate. So before I start, I just want to make sure all my marks can tolerate this particular action. So I'm going to start right in the wallet area, and I'm going to go across them. Okay, flip completely around, see what my, my uh, model measures at this point. It's 20. Eighteen and a half. Seventeen three eighths. Fifteen and three quarters. Okay. Let's see, I'm still an inch big at my four inch level. Um, I am three quarters of an inch at my two inch. One inch still at the two inch. Three quarters of an inch here. And I'm not gonna take much more off the bottom. So I'm gonna work up in this area and do my reductions again.
measurements again. So close we are. Okay, I want to hit 19 and a quarter, and I am at 19 and three quarters. I'm a half inch too big. I am a little undersized here. I am. No. Let's go back here. I need to be at 19 and a quarter. I'm at 19 and three quarters. Three quarters of an inch. I need to be at 17 and a half. I'm at 18 and a quarter. So another half inch. My six inch need to be 16 and three eighths. I'm at 17 and an eighth. Another half inch, 15 and a half. So I'm going to take a good half inch off. So I'm going to look at my model and look how it's shaping up before I decide where I'm going to start taking more, more material off. I know that we can tolerate in this area. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce this area down somewhat. I'm within a half inch of my global reduction targets. So I'm looking at my cast overall, looking at my model, and I'm just trying to make a determination where I could take material off, see if I have any peaks or valleys. And I know that I want this area here to be rounded. I know I can take some material off here, as mentioned earlier, help control rotation. So I'm just basically blending it in, knowing that where I have to be aware of how much material I have to take off in specific locations. I look down on it, lay your straight edge on, see where the high spots are. Getting really close to the point where I'm just going to start smoothing it up, filling it up, filling it in the low spots and smoothing it up. So I'm looking to see if I lay my straight edge on, where's the peaks and valleys. Still have that cupping over the lateral wall, which is what I want. And I'm looking here at the wallet area and I see I have gapping here, I have a high spot and I know I'm high in this area. So I'm going to make some compression in here. Should be pretty close to my values at this point. Let's check and see again. I need to be at 19 and a quarter. I'm at 19 and a half. Uh, I need to be at 17 and a half, and I'm at 18. I need to be at 16 and 3 eighths, and I'm at 17. So this middle section here needs to have some material taken off. So let's look and see if I have any highs and lows. Right in here. Okay, I'm a little bit over, maybe about a quarter inch in some areas, right on in others. I know once I smooth it up, I should be right on the money. So at this particular point, I'm just going to get my sanding screen and I'm going to go ahead and smooth it up. I'm paying attention to the brim. I'm going to make that look like a brim. So have a, uh, a IC brim handy so you could you can look at it and, and, and compare where you're headed to, okay? But overall, my tension values are met. All 
All right, we're going to do modifications of the hand casted uh, gel liner AK socket. Uh, as you can see, I've transferred my alignment lines like we've been doing in the past. All my lines have transferred from my casting. I re I'm re going to reestablish my increments zero, two, four, six, eight, and then I'll take the indolible. And I'll go in and, and mark each one of them, as well as my alignment lines. It's really important to get uh, your hand placement correct. I'm going to try to create this brim out of the uh, uh, piece of pl plaster that I have here. Uh, I want you to take note where my hand placement was. My initial tuberosity is right in this location. I came in with my two fingers, got on the, on the medial side of that ischial tuberosity with my fingers and created some compression. And I tried to squeeze in the wallet area as much as I can while I'm pushing up on the glutes to help create my uh, posterior wall and to determine how much compression my subject can tolerate in this particular area. So <clears throat> before you um, do your cast, Practice your hand technique and get it down because that's going to save you a lot of time when it comes to making your brim. So once again, I'm going to reestablish my trim lines. The first thing I'm going to do is work on my medial wall. And as I've established my, my trim lines, whenever my my patient was standing in the parallel bars. I identified his line of progression with the one inch strap that came up into the perineum. And right on that strap, I marked my uh, line of progression. And that's going to be re represented by my medial wall. So what I've done is I got the, the draw knife. And what I've done is I've tried to cut the plaster down to that particular location. And I take the draw knife, keeping my, my line parallel to the floor. And idea here is to bring the draw knife down and carve that area out down to your uh, line of progression. Pretty much like we did on, uh, on our previous uh, a quad socket. All right, at this point, I've got my medial wall uh, scrape down to my line of progression and what I'm going to do at this particular point is I'm going to record all my measurements okay it's zero it's not going to be the most accurate but I'm going to record my measurement and put them on my worksheet and this is for my model it uh, at my inch level I'm 21 I come down to my two inch level I am uh, 20 and 3 quarters. I'm a 4 inch. I am 18 and a half. Uh, the next one is 17 and a quarter. Um, 16 and 3 eighths. And my last one is actually smaller than my anatomical. My anatomical measured 16. Uh, this is about 15 and 5 eighths. And the purpose for that was, you notice whenever I was casting him, we elongated it and pulled the pin. So I'm not going to take off any extra material down here. I'm just going to smooth it up because my, uh, my tension values are going to be, uh, be started uh, where my liner, my gel liner, meets the, the perineum. And that's approximately at the two inch location. So from the two inch location down, I'm going to follow the manufacturer specifications for uh, the reduction. I use the Ohio Willow Wood gel liner there, and I use the progressive uh, for my subject. And the recommended tolerance is five to seven percent reduction from the model. However, I got to create a brim above that particular location. So I'm going to call that the ish level. I'm looking at an inch and an eighth reduction at the uh, level of the ischial tuberosity. 
first place where I'm going to cut in is in the posterior section and get my medial wall perpendicular to the floor and establish a line of progression. And I'm going to take my half round and I'm going to keep my half round and I'm going to cut right in and I'm going to go down. I can see how much my patient can tolerate. I'm going to go in oh, down to at this particular point, I'm going to try to go down about a half inch minimum. And I'm going to hold it at that point and I know my initial tuberosity is right here the instructions say go one inch proximal to that you put a line all the way around your model you can do this a couple different ways you can hold your tape measure there and you can proceed to mark your line all the way around So now I got my trim line for my posterior section, one inch proximal to my initial tuberosity. And I know that from looking at my brim, this is what I'm going to try to create out of this plaster. So I know my ish is resting here, same way on my brim. So I'm going to try to carve that area out. Keeping in mind, I want it to end up looking like the brim that I have on my table, my initial containment brim. And I got a pretty good contour of my patient's glute, gluteal area. I'm going to try to maintain that. So I've already gone down about a half inch. And distal to that, I know that I could uh, blend in the high spots, try to make a nice transition. And my liner, I can see where my liner, uh, it replicates its transition right at this point. So underneath here, or up above here, is uh, my patient's uh, limb, or his body contour. So I'm going to smooth that transition down a bit. I've recorded all my, all my numbers off my model, and I've added 5% uh, reduction, which will be my targets from my two inch going distally. So I'm gonna leave the posterior section alone for now, and I'm gonna draw up my lateral wall. So at ish level, my lateral wall needs to go about three and a half inches. So at this point, I'm going to draw my lateral wall, bring it back to my one inch proximal to ish, and I'm going to establish my posterior lateral junction. And I can see that I can tolerate a good bit of material to be taken off in this area. I may have to fill in some, but I know that I'm going to go ahead and just Try to take some material off this. If you look at the contour that was created on the patient's uh, hip, I'm still flaring away. Uh, probably flaring away a good half inch. 
and according to my brim, I don't want it to flare away. I want it to cup, cup over the trochanter. My trochanter is in this location, so I need to come proximal to that. I'm right now. I'm just trying to get some sort of a shape, some proximal brim shape. This draw knife will take a little more material off. I'm just going to come down. Uh, maybe four or five swipes just to take that, just to reduce that roll there and create a more of a gentle roll towards the glutes. And I'll reestablish my trim line just so I don't get lost in the project here, which can happen. So that's enough for my posterior lateral section. Spin it around, take a look at it again. All the while I'm trying to maintain the U my, on my posterior, that my posterior brim has. And I have pretty much kept that, at least at this point. I'm just gonna hit some of the high spots to, re, to reestablish that contour and make it uh, uh, seem like there's no transitions. Okay, I got the uh, lateral wall facing the 12 o'clock position. I'm going to get my line of progression parallel to the floor. And I'm going to take this ball joff that I have right here on the lateral wall, which I'm going to call distortion. So I want to do a flattening within this area here to replicate what I have on my brim. Stopping right around where the trochanter is located. And I'm just going to try to make that cup like it does on the brim. And this is my ish level right about here. Okay, you see I'm starting to get some semblance of an anatomical roll or radius here at this particular level. Not perfect, but it's much different than the block of plaster that I started with. So that's about enough for the lateral posterior wall. I'm going to go to the interior section, interior wall. Before I do, I know that I have to come about three and a half inches proximal to the dish level. So I'll reestablish that trim line. Okay, once again, we've got the anterior wall facing up. I'm going to get the line of progression perpendicular to the floor. Lock that in. Okay, I'm going to look at the Scarpus Triangle area. And I know that that is coming in approximately one inch lateral from the adductor longus tendon, which I had marked in this location.
and I'm just going to carve in my radius for my brim, scarpus knife, and I know that my subject uh, had compression here in this location, and uh, my partner that was casting with me, he put his uh, impression right in this location, and I know my subject can tolerate this impression that's here. So I'm going to try to make my, my trim line come down. Uh, in the compression, it looks to be about 3 eighths of an inch. And I'm going to try to come down to that point. Deepest point being Scarpus Triangle. And it might be a little low. So I think where the hand impression is, is here, I would like the deepest part to be right in here. So I'm going to end up filling this area in because I'm going to make this location, my Scarpus, the deepest point. And once again, that Scarpus triangle is going to end up helping to control rotation. So right now, I'm just basically trying to rough in my brim. I'm well above my tension value areas, and I'm just trying to get some sort of direction as to how I'm going to modify and create a shape, a brim shape, before I really start taking down my tension values. And once again, there was distortion here created by uh, the hand pressure, which uh, indicates to me that we can tolerate even a little bit more in this location.